Here's our question. Imagine that you work for the Accident Investigation Board. There has been a very nasty train crash, and you've been given the job of analysing data from the black box. This is the recording system which trains, planes, and so on have, um, which has been recovered from the wreck of the train. Now, luckily enough for you, the black box was equipped with an accelerometer, as indeed they often are, which has recorded the acceleration of the train for the last few minutes before the crash. The data are shown in the next slide. What can we deduce from these? Okay, so here are the data. Um, what can we deduce from these? So here's acceleration zero. Anything above means the train's getting faster. Anything below, the train's getting slower. So at the beginning of where the data is, the train was getting slower at a constant acceleration. Then it stopped it um, accelerating, so it stayed at a constant speed, not necessarily a speed of zero. Then it accelerated, got faster. Stopped that once again, set at a constant speed, and the speed here must be higher than the speed over there then decelerated for a little bit, at the same rate it was decelerating over here, then a whopping great deceleration, then back to no acceleration. So what on earth is going on here? Ah, okay, so let's assume over here at the end, that's when the train has crashed. So it's just sitting there, a smoldering ruin. So let's guess at rest because small drill ruins don't generally move. So we've got all this acceleration around, deceleration around here, that's all slowing it down. This very steep deceleration, that's where it's slowed down very fast, that's probably actually the crash. So that's probably the actual crash. Because during a crash you decelerate extremely fast, because you've crashed into something. But then, what's that? It looks like the car, the train, started decelerating a little bit before the crash. Now we'll come back to that, going further back. Um, in this stretch over here, it looks like the train was keeping a constant speed, so it was just cruising along the track before the crash. Then there was an acceleration, which means that back here the speed must be less. So maybe the train was at rest here, that was not moving and decelerated. So maybe it was sitting at a station here. That would make sense. So it was sitting at a station, then accelerated until it got to cruising speed. So... At station. Cruising. And then... What's this? Well, that's probably decelerating to get to the station. It's negative, so that must be uh, approaching the station. So here it's coming into the station. That's the, that's the brakes. It's interesting that this level is the same as that level, so maybe this is what the brakes of the train can do. That's the deceleration that the brakes can manage. So it decelerated, came to a halt at the station, passengers got on and off. Then the driver put the foot down to the accelerator, it moved, accelerated away. Stopped accelerating and then was just cruising along at a uniform speed here, and then here something happened. Maybe it was approaching another station, or maybe the driver saw whatever it was they were going to crash into, and so they slammed on the brakes, braked for a little bit, and but not enough because they then had a very big braking for a short time, a crash, and then finished. Now one thing to check um, for that to work, if this is at rest and that's at rest, then the total area in here and the total area in there should be the same. And they look kind of similar, as far as I can tell, so that's probably reasonable. So I think that's our picture. Train came to a station, stopped, accelerated away, was cruising along, and about here, for some reason, the driver started to decelerate, but it wasn't enough, big crash.